The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to Creating Pathways to Opportunity for Youth and Young Adults, a County Health Rankings and Roadmaps and National Association of Counties co-webinar. My name is Erica burroughs Girardi, and I am a community coach with County Health Rankings and Roadmaps. I will be co-facilitating today's discussion with Michelle Price from the National Association of Counties, what we call NACO. You will also hear from our two guests from the Healthy Blair County Coalition in Blair County, Pennsylvania, Colleen Heim and Donna Gordy. This is the first time that County Health Rankings and Roadmaps and NACO have co-facilitated webinar, so I want to thank our audience for pioneering this event with us. Next, I want to take a moment to get you oriented to the technology we're using today. The GoToWebinar um, attendee interface is made up of two parts. On the left, you can see the viewer window where you will see our screen throughout the presentation. On the right, you can see the control panel. Here you will find handouts for today's session that my colleague Justin Rivas has already dropped in, including a PDF of our slides, a list of related chat links that he's gonna be sharing with you today, our bios, uh, a handout from our guest today, as well as a copy of the 2017 County Health Rankings um, Key uh, Report. And that has some really important information in there about disconnected youth. So I do want to encourage you to read that report when you have some time. Now here you can interact with us um, through the question section. There I go, I wanna make sure I had the arrow in the right place. Um, please feel free to ask your questions or share your thoughts and experiences with us via the control panel throughout our webinar today, and we'll be sure to leave time for questions. Today, we have two audiences that we are introducing to each other. NACO brought some members to the dance, and I brought some folks to the dance with County Health Rankings and Roadmaps. So I'm asking that you bear with us as we set some context. So let's start with who are we? Um, County Health Rankings and Roadmaps is a collaboration between the Robert Wood Johnson uh, Foundation and the University of Wisconsin Population Health Institute. We rank the health of nearly every county in every state, and we provide resources to assist communities in moving from data to actionable steps to create opportunities for health. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Michelle so you can learn more about her and NACO. Michelle? Thanks, Erica. I'm Michelle Price, the Associate Program Director for Health at the National Association of Counties. NACO unites America's 3,069 county governments as the only national organization representing county government. NACO assists counties in pursuing excellence in public service by bringing county elected and appointed officials together to exchange ideas, advocate for national policy, and build new leadership skills as counties build and enhance healthy, vibrant, safe, and resilient communities. On the next slide, you will see one very important NACO initiative, the Rural Impact County Challenge which we call RIC. RIC is a national initiative that helps highlight and support counties' efforts to reduce the number of rural children and families living in poverty. RIC is really a call to action, looking for strong county leadership, commitment, and vision to achieve concrete results on behalf of rural children and families. The website to commit to take action in your community is on your screen, naco.org slash rural impact. Last year, NACO also invited RIC counties to apply for community coaching through County Health Rankings and Roadmaps Community Coaching Program. Throughout 2017, selected counties have been working one-on-one -on -one with coaches to address childhood poverty. Later on in this webinar, we will share exciting information about applications that are now available for 2018 RIC Community Coaching. In Blair County, Pennsylvania, which you will hear from shortly, is one of our 2017 RIC Community Coaching Counties. This leads right into our next slide, where I now want to set the framework for our discussion today about disconnected youth and young adults. Approximately 12% of youth and young adults between the ages of 16 and 24 are not in school and not working and are considered disconnected. 
These years represent a critical stage in an individual's journey towards independence, self-sufficiency, and civic engagement in adulthood. Disconnection can have health and economic costs, not just for youth, but for their communities. Youth who are not on a path to opportunities to advance in school, gain work experience, form relationships, and build social supports in the community represent untapped potential to strengthen the social and economic vibrancy of our communities. I'll now turn it back over to Erica to talk more about county health rankings. Thanks, Michelle. I wanna share a few frameworks and tools from county health rankings that can assist you as you look to create a community that engages youth and young adults. Let me start with the county health rankings framework. For some of you, this, may, this image may be new. For others, you may have seen it before. So I'm just asking everyone to indulge me as I, to take a moment to explain this very important framework. The county health rankings is rooted in the theory that health is the sum of many parts. This image shows our approach to health and the foundation for county health rankings and roadmaps. So what does this image tell us? Well, starting from the bottom, we know from research that effective local, state, and federal policies and programs can improve a variety of health factors that in turn shape the health of communities. Many health factors, those you see in the blue boxes, shape our health outcomes. We specifically look at health behaviors, clinical care, social and economic factors, and the physical environment. We measure two types of health outcomes, those you see in the green boxes, to show how healthy each county is, length of life and quality of life. For most counties, we provide county level data for each of the 35 measures that we use to produce a county's rank. And then we take that, those measures and we place it on our website in what's called a county snapshot. Now these 35 measures are distributed across health outcomes and the four buckets of health factors. We also include additional measures, which provide some additional data and context that might be helpful for you, but it's not used to calculate the, the rankings. And to learn more about our approach, you can see the, the link that Justin is chatting out right now. This year, County Health Rankings and Roadmaps included data for the first time from Measure of America on disconnected youth among the additional social and economic factor measures. What you're viewing here is a screenshot from the Blair County, Pennsylvania County snapshot. Here we see circled the percentage of youth who were disconnected in Blair County at the time that the rankings were released. Now I'm excited to say that the youth disconnection percentage has now dropped in Blair County, but I want to have our guests, or give our guests rather, the honor of revealing that more uh, recent data. So you'll hear more about that in a second. Youth disconnection is often a symptom of a community struggling to thrive. We find that counties with higher than average percentages of disconnected youth are also those struggling with lower graduation rates, higher unemployment, and high um, childhood poverty. So when creating opportunities for youth to engage, we often must be inclusive of multiple of sectors um, for solutions to those issues. So in other words, you can see how engaging education and businesses are key to finding solutions to engaging you. And that's where our take action cycle comes in. This is an image of our take action cycle. It shows that in order to address health effectively, multiple stakeholders have to be included in the conversation. You will also notice action steps that, um, that surround the cycle and, and start and span from assessing needs and resources all the way to evaluation. Work together and communicate encompass the entire cycle because those action steps occur concurrently as you're completing the others. When on our website, you will notice that the take action cycle is interactive. So hovering over any of those action steps or sector groups will link you to additional information. So this is where you can ex access the hundreds of practical tools and resources that will support you in moving forward in your work. Now, one of the reasons why NACO is a principal partner in our work is because they represent the government sector. Therefore, just as we encourage you to collaborate across sectors at the local level, we're collaborating at the national level. 
Lastly, I want to share one other tool and um, that we call What Works for Health. Often partnerships will ask us, like, what are the best practices or what are evidence-informed programs to address health? What Works for Health is the answer. What Works for Health contains a menu of policies and programs which have been vetted by our team of analysts and are assigned an evidence rating ranging from scientifically supported to ineffective. What I like about What Works for Health is not only are those strategies assigned that evidence rating, but we describe the strategy. We tell you what benefits you can expect from implementing that strategy, and we let you know if the strategy is likely to have an effect on disparities. We know that communities have limited resources and often do not have the personnel to, to research strategies this thoroughly, and that's why we've done the work for you. You simply need to click on What Works for Health on our website to begin your search, and Justin, I know, is chatting out the link for What Works for Health right now. So can What Works for Health help you if you're trying to cultivate opportunities for youth in your community? You bet it can. On this slide, I'm going to share some examples of specific policies and programs that we call strategies that you will find in What Works for Health. The first three are related to academic achievement. These academic achievement strategies ensure that youth are supported in their education. The next two strategies focus on alternative learning models and ways for students to gain exposure to the workplace. And the last few strategies focus farther upstream, ensuring preparation from the earliest stages to maximize academic success. And you can find more information about our evidence ratings by going to What Works for Health. So these are just three ways that you can engage youth and young adults in your community to prepare them for successful and productive futures. But if you're curious like me, you're wondering, what does this actually look like in local communities? Like, how do you actually make this happen? And what are some of the steps that our communities can take uh, to get there? So today's guiding question is, how can we cultivate pathways of opportunity for our youth and young adults? And here to answer those questions are our two guests from Blair County, Pennsylvania. I want you to join me in welcoming Colleen Hine and Donna Gordy. Colleen is the director of the Healthy Blair County Coalition. She has a master's degree in health education from the Pennsylvania State University. Colleen is responsible for overseeing the countywide community health needs assessment and coordinating the implementation plans of the eight work groups and committees of the coalition. Colleen is the team leader for the RIC, which is the Rural Impact County Challenge that's in Blair County. Former Blair County Commissioner Donna, Donna Gordy served in that office beginning in January 1984, and she was the first woman elected in Blair County history. She served, to, she served as county commissioner for 28 years, choosing not to seek re-election in 2011. Commissioner Gordy served as a president of the County Commissioners Association of Pennsylvania in 1993. She was known by many across the state for her involvement with human services programs and was appointed by multiple governors to serve on a variety of state level advisory boards. Donna continues to serve her community through service on numerous boards and committees, including the Healthy Blair County Coalition. So thank you, ladies, for taking time out of your day to share with um, folks across the country about your work. And um, Colleen, I'm going to start with you. Tell me about the Healthy Blair County Coalition. Well, first of all, uh, on behalf of Blair County, I want to uh, thank you for the opportunity to be a RIC site um, and for the uh, opportunity to participate in this webinar. Um, the Healthy Blair County Coalition is a partnership of individuals and organizations, and our mission is to promote the social, economic, emotional, and physical well-being of area residents. The work of the coalition began in 2007 when Blair County Human Services Office and the United Way invited other community leaders to join and support an effort to conduct a countywide needs assessment. Um, the coalition uh, was expanded in 2012 when all nonprofit hospitals were required to conduct a community health needs assessment and then develop intervention plans to meet those community health needs. 
Um, currently, we have 121 members of our coalition that participate in our programs and activities, serve on our work groups, provide funding, um, and or participate in our community health needs assessment. Um, they represent a diverse and, and a very valuable group of individuals. Okay, thank you for um, setting the stage for us. And um, Donna, how are you doing today? Fine, thank you. So sure. glad we could be with you. Thank you. So what are some of your coalition's activities? Well, we're showing you the uh, flow chart currently. You see our steering committee and, and various things. Across the bottom are our eight work groups. We have a Let's Move committee that it relates to healthy lifestyles to address obesity, which was identified in our county needs plan. We have alcohol and other drugs work group, a dental work group for access to dental care, uh, mental health for children's needs in particular, tobacco-free work group, and our Bridges Network, which is the group that focuses on poverty, which is where this group is uh, attended to. These groups meet regularly to develop strategies, programs, and activities to address the challenges that have been identified in our community. And you can see where they are highlighted across the bottom of that chart. Pretty comprehensive. That's great. Um, Thank you. Colleen, the, the coalition has adopted guiding principles to direct your efforts. Can you share those principles with us? We have two guiding principles um, that have directed our efforts really from the beginning. First, our steering committee um, viewed this as an opportunity to assess and impact all aspects of a healthy Blair County. And second, we we promote the collective impact model, where a structured collaborative effort is more likely to achieve some substantial impact um, on larger scale social problems. And what that really means is we have a common agenda um, and a shared vision for uh, change here in the county. Uh, we collect data and uh, measure our results. Um, I think very important, we have mutually reinforcing activities among our organizations and our partners, as well as continuous communication. Um, as Donna mentioned, we have monthly meetings, um, we have regular communication through emails, uh, we're always sending out you know, meeting minutes and, and do the best that we can to market, um, but we also have a backbone support. And what that means is uh, we do have a, a funding source. Um, it's important to have staff that has the skills to manage and, and plan and support all of the initiatives. We try to use technology and communication. Um, and as I said, you know, data collection and, and reporting our results out. Um, that's different than isolated impact. Um, and that is where each organization works independently. Um, and if they do collaborate with others, it's more to share information um, rather than work on a long-term initiative together. Right, and so what we're seeing in this graphic are the sectors that we know play a role in creating healthy communities. And your coalition has adopted like a multiple backbone support strategy. Tell us a little bit about that strategy. Well, our coalition steering committee um, is comprised of the partners that you know are listed uh, above, and, and they provide the backbone support by um, the hiring of a director. Um, they contribute toward funding, and, and certainly many of them provide uh, a wealth of in-kind support. Um, so there is no one partner that provides the backbone support. Uh, again, it's truly a collective impact model. Okay, thank you for that. And one of the opportunities that came your way was the, um, the NACO RIC, again, the Rural Impact County Challenge. Um, why did Blair County decide to get involved in the RIC? Because poverty was identified as one of the highest ranking concerns in each of our three community health needs assessment, um, our Bridges Network, which again uh, looks at poverty, was formed and has been meeting um, to address issues of poverty in Blair County. Um, in our 2015 community health needs assessment, over 66% of respondents uh, on our household survey listed poverty 
as a as a significant community challenge. 95% of our key informants rank poverty as our top challenge. Um, and then again, if you look at our county health rankings, uh, Boyer County snapshot, children living in poverty was an area that um, we needed that needed to be addressed. Um, so we thought that community coaching would provide us with an unbiased expert, um, someone with a, a perspective to help us understand and address childhood poverty in our community. Um, so uh, we have had uh, a you know county health rankings community coach um, since starting our challenge in 2016. We also thought that you know we would benefit from what has worked maybe or not worked in other communities. Um, and I think, uh, you know, it was a way for us to motivate our community and to identify key stakeholders um, and certainly to provide an opportunity for us to implement best practices. And the RIC really is the pathway for us to do that. Yeah, and here you see a picture of your RIC team, and we see you there in the yellow sweater. And then on the right is the community coach, my colleague, Jerry Spegman, who is working alongside you all to help you achieve your goals. So thank you for sharing that picture with us. Um, now, again, you, you, what you and Michelle have been telling us that the RIC is there to, to provide support for communities that want to address children and families and, and poverty. That said, why did Blair County decide to, to hone in on providing opportunity pathways for youth as part of the, the RIC community, com uh, community coaching program? Originally, we planned to focus on school attendance and academic success. Um, however, after consulting with uh, our coach, Jerry, and reviewing the Blair County data contained in the Measure of America report, um, our coaching team decided to broaden our scope to youth disconnection. Um, this would allow us to work on additional strategies, involve more partners, um, but still continue to focus on school attendance. Um, as we all know, there is no one factor that leads to youth disconnectedness. It may be a lack of success in school, drug and alcohol use, mental health issues, uh, you know, teen pre pregnancy, barrier, uh, you know, other barriers, um, and certainly they, you know, increase the likelihood that those individuals will have higher rates of unemployment, lower incomes, and therefore a factor in generational poverty in our community. Um, the chart that you're seeing there reflects our most recent data, um, which indicates, again, the percent of disconnected youth in Blair County um, is 14.4%, which is higher than Pennsylvania at 12.3% and significantly higher than you know, the United States at 11.9%. Um, we are pleased this is a decrease from 17% originally included in the county health ranking profile for Blair County. Yeah, yeah, newer data was uh, were made available after the rankings released, but I really love the fact that your coalition still saw the need to take action rather than settle for a slight improvement. So kudos to you for realizing that this still needed some attention and that you just weren't going to let what you know just let it fall by the wayside. Um, Donna, would you be willing to to explain the the process and planning for your RIC initiative and what are the priorities and challenges that are being worked on as part of the Blair County for, for your RIC? And you might be on mute, Donna. Uh-oh, I thought I heard you. I think she's on it. Sorry, I thought I had it. Yeah, uh, to there begin with, our, our County Board of Commissioners passed and signed a proclamation supporting our efforts to address the childhood poverty and agreed to participate in the Rural Impact County Challenge. And what we see here is an image of that proclamation. And I don't care how good anybody's eyes are, I know you can't read it. So I just want to let you all know that is the handout that Justin shared with you. Um, so look for that handout in the handout section on your go-to attendee webinar interface. Um, Donna, how was having this express support from the Board of County Commissioners um, been helpful in helping you like kickstart your focus on creating pathways of opportunity for youth? Well, generally speaking, county commissioners are viewed as 
community leaders. Uh, they are elected officials, of course, and they have people working for, for them uh, in various capacities that are involved in the community. So after we received a support from the commissioners, we started to form our community coaching team. This team meets at least monthly, and the team is made up of representatives from our Bridges Network, that group that uh, focuses on poverty, and our school attendance task force. We then discussed and ultimately selected, after much discussion, five key strategies that will form the basis of our implementation plan. First, we want to, as Colleen mentioned earlier, continue to focus on school attendance and academic success. We feel that that is very key to our efforts. Second, we want to look at mentoring programs, looking at evidence-based programs such as Big Brothers Big Sisters, but other opportunities for mentoring of youth in our community. Third, school and community interventions, uh, looking at the broad array of services and supports that are available in our schools and in our communities. How can we strengthen them and make sure everyone is aware of them? Uh, fourth is our workforce development and business involvement, and we'll be talking more about that later. And then fifth is pro-social activities and community engagement is also extremely important to these efforts. So as we have developed our strategies, we have added certain key individuals along to our coaching team uh, to represent these different sectors to make sure that we are being uh, fully collaborative and representative. And, you know, you're a former county commissioner, so tell us why it's important to involve a diverse group of stakeholders, including county commissioners, and what role can county government play in these efforts? Well, as I mentioned, county commissioners uh, frequently oversee a broad array of community services, such as human services coordination, <clears throat> excuse me, mental health services, drug and alcohol, children and youth or child welfare programs, frequently interface with the courts on juvenile probation, other sorts of prevention services. So commissioners themselves, those who work for them, such as planners or agency administrators, again, are those community leaders that can provide that leadership sense of direction uh, and encourage participation by bringing certain stakeholders to the table when the commissioner reaches out and says I'd like you to be a part of this that frequently can be meaningful to people mm -hmm. in our in Blair County specifically we have a Department of Human Services that can provide support and has in the past through grants and funding of various things and they also are a great partners in researching models and guidelines uh, in addition to what you mentioned on the What Works Healthy uh, County Health Rankings website. Mm -hmm. Our president judge, uh, who I will mention was the first woman ever to serve in that capacity, uh, if for the Blair County Court of Common Pleas, created a school attendance task force a few years ago, which has been instrumental in bringing together schools, our children, youth, and families agency, magisterial district judges, the entry level of, of into the courts, and our juvenile probation system, and other agencies that work with them with, with services and programs so that all can un better understand the root causes of school truancy and collaboratively develop a plan to work with all segments of the community to encourage and support school attendance. We know certainly that it is much easier to prevent disconnection in the first place rather than attempt to re-engage youth after they have dropped out of school and are not working. Absolutely. You're absolutely right about that. Um, and so now I want to kind of shift to the role of local businesses. But first, Colleen, I, I want to thank you for sharing this beautiful picture of downtown Hollisdaysburg, which I understand is the county seat. Um, what role do local businesses play in creating opportunities for youth, particularly in small towns like those in Blair County? Well, our local business leaders uh, understand the importance of growing a healthy workforce. Uh, most of our most successful business leaders grew up in Blair County. They left to pursue their education but came back to support and strengthen the community. They create jobs and opportunities for young people who work here, but also to stay here and raise their families. Um, but in addition, they support youth engagement programs and activities. 
And can you give us some examples of how businesses are creating pathways of opportunity for you? Sure. Um, the first one um, is Operation Our Town, which is a community and business partnership um, that was created to promote healthy neighborhoods hoods and protect um, citizens from illegal drug use and, and resulting crime. Um, since 2007, um, they have raised and provided um, over $2.8 million in grants that they have distributed to law enforcement, treatment, and prevention programs in Blair County. And those include grants that fund youth engagement activities. Um, another example comes from um, our Blair County Chamber of Commerce and the basics Committee. Uh, BASICS is an acronym for Businesses and Schools Investing in Cooperative Solutions. This is a nationally recognized program that really brings businesses and education communities together um, on issues that affect young people. So uh, in particular, you know, those that are related to career and workforce development programs like um, the Next Generation uh, Force, Job Shadowing, we have a, a Leadership Blair County Youth and Young Entrepreneurs Academy are some of the examples um, that our chamber has created um, you, know, uh, you know, for those opportunities for our young people. Um, and then certainly, you know, not last, but uh, supporting our youth is a primary area of focus for many uh, of the United Way of Blair County impact grant recipient programs. Um, and hundreds of area businesses participate in the United Way's uh, annual campaign, and which provides funding to our impact grant programs. So, for example, in 2016-2017, uh, over 12,000 Blair County residents directly benefited from our impact grant programs, um, thanks in part, again, to the support of local businesses. And, and how many youth were directly impacted? Well, we're proud to say that um, nearly 6,000 youth have been directly impacted um, with those United Way impact grants. Oh, wow. That's, that's amazing. And, and I have to give a plug for the United Way because County Health Rankings and Roadmaps actually has a partnership with United Way worldwide. And, and we can tell you, United Ways want to be at the table. If you're listening to this webinar, if you're participating and United Ways are not at the table helping you plan to create a healthier community, please do invite them. Um, they have so much to contribute in terms of knowledge, resources, and skill sets. So um, they can certainly uh, be of assistance to you just like they were for, for Blair County. And um, we know that education is one of the most critical pathways for success for youth. I showed that to you all when I was talking about uh, what works for health strategies. So, um, Colleen, tell me a little bit about the, the schools in, in uh, the Blair County school districts. Like, who are your cheerleaders there and how have they been involved in your efforts to ensure that youth remain in school? Well, our local school districts are involved in many initiatives designed to keep kids in school. Um, they are well represented as part of our RIC. Um, Kathy Harlow is the superintendent of the Tyrone Area School District. She is a member of our coaching team, um, and she's also on the steering committee for the Healthy Blair County Coalition. Um, she has been updating all of the other school superintendents at their monthly meetings. Um, we have uh, seven public schools as well as uh, quite a few uh, non-public and private schools here in the county. Um, and in fact, our Call to Action Summit, uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit, is going to be held on a county-wide school and service day so that a variety of school staff, from principals to guidance counselors to new school nurses, are able to attend. Uh, Patty Saka is the attendance director for our largest school district. Um, she is also a member of our RIC team and a co-chairperson of the school attendance task force. Um, this is important because in uh, November of 2016, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania signed new truancy legislation uh, to improve school attendance and to deter, turrence, uh, deter turrency, uh, truancy. 
Um, in Blair County, our school attendance task force has been meeting to discuss um, how best to respond, develop intervention plans, um, and to coordinate services for chronically truant students. Um, the task force developed a marketing campaign, and you can kind of see that there um, on your screen. Um, they were able to get quite a few billboards around uh, the county with a message that states, you know, get our kids in school. It matters. I love that. That's so cute. That's very eye-catching too, by the way. So um, just want to take a second to remind our audience to begin populating your questions in the question box because Justin's queuing those up so our guests can respond to them at the end of our webinar. Um, Donna, want to bring your voice back into the room here. What we're seeing on this slide is the breadth of the key stakeholders that you have reached out to to um, to bring these, um, invite people to be a part of this good work that you're doing. Because we know that in addition to local government, businesses, and schools, there are multiple sectors that should be involved in this effort. Tell me about them and how they can support your work. Well, absolutely. And you showed a slide earlier that had suggested groups to be engaged and involved. And I think you'll see this looks very much like this. Right. So in Blair County, these are our key stakeholders. Uh, our coaching team consists of representatives from the education system, healthcare, medical services, social services, mentoring, planning, and workforce development, along with early childhood education, and of course, me, a former county commissioner. Mm -hmm. uh, these individuals have been attending our regular monthly RIC planning meetings, and they will become lead facilitators during our Call to Action Summit. They've been advocating and recruiting other partners within the community. They each represent and have been working for many years to engage youth within their own disciplines, but now we're coming together more collectively. As one other example, we feel it is important to include our healthcare and medical community since there clearly is a connection between absenteeism in school and health status. So you see on the chart, our stakeholders are identified, the court system and law enforcement, and here we include our Blair County Safe Schools Network, uh, which are folks learning how to protect themselves within the schools, and it, it brings a certain key perspective faith-based youth ministry programs, local and county government, healthcare and medical community, we mentioned is already at, uh, important to understanding the link with absenteeism in schools, business and workforce development, schools, and here we incl include student assistance programs, uh, which in Pennsylvania, again, there is legislation requiring all school systems to have a student assistance program, which identifies students who are having school performance or behavior issues that may be related to substance abuse, to mental health concerns, or other related issues that help causing them to not be performing or not doing their best in school. We also include nonprofit organizations that serve youth and families directly, school attendance task force, we've mentioned that a couple times, early learning providers, because we want to get to the various early roots of ch youth involvement, and uh, social service organizations are certainly important. And then, of course, youth and family engagement is important, uh, and those may have been disconnected at one time or currently are feeling disconnected, we need to engage them and learn from their experiences. Yeah, and, and our um, participants will note that a lot of these stakeholders that you have just mentioned are tied to those strategies that we know are effective in terms of um, keeping, um, creating these pathways of opportunity for youth. So kudos to you. Um, Colleen, I know it's early, but what successes are you seeing since starting um, the RIC with its focus on opportunity pathways for youth? Our first success um, is the support and enthusiasm we have received um, for not only being selected by NACO and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, um, but also just the recognition that this is important for our youth in Blair County. As we have 
have been meeting with key stakeholders, the one consistent comment or agreement is that no one single entity or agency can do this alone. Mm -hmm. um, we need the entire community to engage our children from the time they're born and beyond. Um, we are planning a call to action summit and already have presenters and key leaders and stakeholders that are ready to attend. Um, in addition, you know, we are rep uh, inviting representatives from each one of our five strategies to either serve on a panel um, or facilitate our breakout sessions. Great. And um, you were telling me about this exciting collaborative opportunity with the local university. Share that with our audience. Well, through the Healthy Blair County Coalition, uh, we have always been collaborating uh, with Penn State Altoona, uh, which is one of the campuses from the Pennsylvania State University. Um, however, in support of this project, uh, one professor has devoted her fall semester class to allow students to research and provide resources to our RIC coaching team. Um, in turn, we will share that information you know, with our Call to Action Summit uh, co-facilitators uh, for our breakouts sessions and then they're able to lead discussions and ultimately develop implementation plans in each one of those uh, five strategy areas that are based on best practice. Um, the students are also going to be attending the summit, which is going to be uh, a good uh, learning opportunity for them. Uh, but then afterward, um, you know, whatever support we might need uh, for the rest of their class, um, the professor is, is willing to work with us on that. And that's another way to engage youth. So you guys are really closing the loop on this. I love it. Um, Donna, I, I know that there's just so many exciting opportunities that are on the horizon for the coalition. But as we know, with every opportunity, there can be some challenges or lessons learned. And I was wondering if you could share some of that with those with our audience. Well, sure. As we said, we're in the early stages of this initiative at this point, and much of our work will take place after the Call to Action Summit, which we are hoping will engage a lot more community partners uh, to step up with us. But there are three challenges that we're well aware of at this point. Uh, one, the demand on schools to focus on academics and testing, while understandable, makes it difficult for them to find the time to implement evidence evidence-based programs and practices with the fidelity that we would like to see. Uh, many, like many communities across the country, our youth are impacted or affected by substance abuse, by mental health issues themselves or their parents, incarcerated parents, bullying, as well as those that have experienced trauma and uh, traumatic events. Our Healthy Blair County Coalition has several work groups, which we mentioned before, focusing on some of those gaps and services and the needs of our residents. We have developed an infographic to share with our community members, which contains some of the data uh, relevant to youth disconnection to help people understand what that means in Blair County. And we know that effective parenting plays a significant role in youth connectedness. Therefore, engaging parents and families is very challenging, yet very crucial to our efforts. The good news is we're not finding it that challenging to work together to solve these issues. We pride ourselves that Blair County is a community uh, with, which we collaborate in order to get things done. Yeah, we, we at County Health Rankings and Roadmaps realize that building relationships is key to overcoming just about any challenge in community. And we always say never underestimate the power of building relationships. So exactly. Yeah. Colleen, what are the next steps for accelerating your work with the RIC? Um, well, first of all, our uh, coaching team um, is very dedicated and they have spent many hours um, already, you know, working on, you know, what would you know, Rick look like, um, our call to action summit, um, but more specifically, our next steps include um, enhancing our marketing campaign so that our community has a better understanding of our youth disconnection data um, and obviously to uh, promote um, the call to action summit. Um, we, you know, need to engage and recruit new partners um, based on, you know, the action plans developed after the summit. Um, we, again, will work with Penn State Altoona to obtain, you know, the research and the data and the best practice models for each one of our strategies. 
um, and we're going to continue the conversation, you know, and move our initiative forward, um, you know, long after the summit. Right. Great. Now, there's some folks on this call, on this webinar, that I'm sure are interested in trying to start some programs um, to um, engage youth locally. And um, we know that building relationships is key to this. So for those other communities interested in creating um, opportunity pathways for youth, what would you consider to be the three most important steps that they can take to engage stakeholders? Um, we believe strongly uh, in the collective impact model, which I discussed earlier. Um, every time we uh, hold a coalition meeting or meet with a new partner, we share that research and the importance of a shared vision. Um, the Healthy Blair County Coalition doesn't take credit for anything that others are doing, but we want to collaborate, we want to support others, um, and we you know, really try to acknowledge those partnerships. Um, again, we are not funded by one organization, but rather obtain uh, funds from a variety of community organizations um, that support and want to make Blair County healthier. Um, second, you know, there are many positive aspects uh, of living in Blair County. It's a great community to live and work and play and raise a family. Um, however, no one here is afraid to acknowledge data that is concerning and suggest a need for change. Um, we utilize the county health ranking report in almost everything that we do. Um, we're pleased that we have improved the rank uh, from the rank of 63 out of 67 counties in Pennsylvania uh, to 47 um, from 2010 to 2017. Um, certainly that's still not a good number, but um, again, we're happy that we're improving what we're doing. Um, and, and I think the, the third one is that any organization or coalition um, ideally needs a dedicated staff person that will focus solely on this effort um, in order to mobilize and support existing programs, you know, but to forge ahead on their own goals and strategies. Um, you know, everyone that's involved is, is very busy with, you know, with their regular job. Um, so, you know, having, having one person that can uh, focus solely on that um, seems to be um, something that is helpful for us. Yeah, yeah. So thank you so much. Thank you, um, Colleen and Donna, for sharing your work um, in Blair County and practical steps and strategies that our audience can take to to start this. And we definitely wish you much continued success. Blair County sounds like a great place to live. So stick around because we do have some questions that I'm sure Justin is going to be asking in a few moments. But I just want to remind the audience, you do have a couple of minutes to get your questions into the question box for um, Justin because he's going to be calling those out in just a second. While he's doing that, Michelle and I want to share a couple of opportunities with you. Michelle, I think you wanted to start with telling folks about the 2018 RIC Community Coaching Opportunity, right? Yes, thanks, Erica. Um, so you heard about the wonderful work that Blair County is doing as part of RIC Community Coaching Program, and I'm so happy to report that applications for a new round of community coaching are now available at naco.org slash rural impact. Selected counties will have the opportunity, as you heard, to work one-on-one -on -one with county health rankings and roadmaps coaches and work more effectively to address poverty in their county. The counties will also be able to connect with each other and form a close network of rural counties who are carrying out similar work. Applications are due November 3rd. Selected counties will be notified by the end of the year and coaching will begin in 2018. More information about the opportunity is available on our website, and I'm also happy to answer any questions. Thanks. I'll now turn it back over to Erica. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. And um, great opportunity there. I would suggest that you look, you know, go to that website to, to get more information about that opportunity. And you don't have to be a member of the RIC to receive coaching. County Health Rankings and Roadmaps employs 11 community coaches who are strategically placed throughout the country to, to provide you with tangible support as you begin to think about how you can advance health and health equity in your community. So to reach out to one of us, simply click on that Get Help button that you will see peppered throughout our website. And a couple of more opportunities I want to share with you just before we get to Justin. The RWJF Culture of Health 
prize is now um, open. Um, this prize recognizes communities that have placed a priority on health and are creating powerful partnerships and deep commitments that will enable everyone, especially those with the greatest barriers to good health, the opportunity to live well. So to learn more about this prize, the eligibility and the, um, the criteria, the selection process, visit rwjf.org backslash prize. So you never know, our next winner might be listening on this webinar. So do please check that out. And also RWJF wants you to know that good ideas have no borders. They've created the We Imagine in America webinar series to explore solutions to creating health around the world. On the next installment of this webinar series, they'll also be looking at disconnected youth. And actually they'll be looking at solutions from Latin America to reconnect youth who are out of school and out of work. So think about um, registering for that. The information is there on that slide and of course is on a pdf of handouts that justin um, put in for you earlier and just before i turn things over to justin i want to personally thank those in our audience who are actually engaged in the work of providing opportunities for youth and young adults this is not easy work and i appreciate the fact that you guys take the time to do that um, i especially want to thank the mental illness recovery center incorporated in columbia south carolina while in Columbia to observe the eclipse earlier this week, the good folks there gave me an impromptu tour of their youth drop-in center that they recently opened. And the youth drop-in center um, serves uh, young folks uh, ages 17 to 24 who are not in school and not in, and not working. And at the center, they're able to get information about how to um, work on their GED and how to get information about jobs. So I want to give a, a shout out to Matt Craig and your colleagues for the good work that you're doing there in Columbia, South Carolina. And with that, I want to um, turn it over to Justin. And Justin, let us know what questions have come up for our guests. Sure thing. Thank you, Erica. So uh, normally we, it's kind of like asking for questions and there's, there's crickets in the room and this time I have pages of questions that we could go through. So I want to apologize right off the bat that we're not going to be able to get to all of them. We have some really excellent questions and some are more nuanced so we can answer those and we'll uh, do that offline as well. But um, I'm going to start off with just a few questions that did come in through the pre-registration and there were kind of some themes that came up that were pretty common. So I think it helped to kind of address a lot of questions at one time. Um, so. Uh, that said, the first the first question I'm going to ask is, um, uh, well, are there any recommendations uh, specific on how to best reach and engage youth uh, in rural settings? And maybe, uh, Colleen, you want to maybe take a stab at this? Sure. Um, I, I think first, the, uh, I think one of my first comments would be that um, it's really important to understand how youth perceive your community, um, you know, including the school system. So, you know, do youth um, um, feel that there are opportunities? You know, are they recognized? Um, you know, do they have the ability to, um, you know, to gather skills? So, you know, how how youth perceives the community that they live in certainly ties into whether they feel engaged or disengaged from that community. Um, for us, uh, you know, we really think it is important to include youth as contributors to the, to the development of any initiative that's designed to impact them. Um, so certainly we need to listen, we need to understand, we need to provide meaningful ways for them to contribute. Um, and that that is often difficult. Uh, we do plan to expand our RIC coaching team uh, after the summit to make sure that we include uh, youth and families. Um, uh, part of some of the, the strategies that, that we chose, um, you know, kind of uh, are, are um, coordinated with this particular question. Um, certainly, we want to provide, um, you know, youth involvement in leadership opportunities. Um, and it's really critical that we provide opportunities for youth from different backgrounds. Um, and, you know, I think all of us really understand that we can't just focus on high achievers, um, you know, because, you know, if, if they are the only ones that have the opportunity to participate, then we're kind of fostering, you know, disconnectedness. Um, matching um, and fostering career opportunities that are needed you know within your community and so we're really going to be working closely with our career and technology center pro-social activities that you know increase access to arts and 4-h programs 
Um, and, and again, the last one is, um, you know, we really have to make sure that we have a network of agencies and resources that can, can you know, that can assist youth that are struggling. So uh, I guess the answer to that is, is multifaceted. That's great, Colleen. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, you really touched on a lot of, like you said, multifaceted ways to address that. Um, and another another question that came up a few times in different iterations um, uh, is in regards to uh, kind of funding. And um, basically, that the question is, do you have any advice on how to best pursue funding in this in this youth area? And are there certain um, opportunities or funders or just specific things funders are looking for? Um, and I think I think Donna um, was maybe hoping to take a stab at this one next. Sure, I'd be glad to. Um, we've already mentioned the United Way is someone that funds a, a number of programs here in the Blair County area. We all know that United Way is all across the country and chances are whatever their priorities are for funding, supporting and helping youth and families are somewhere within their, their mission or their stated in, intended purpose for funding. So that would be a first place that, that I would certainly look at in most any community. Um, community foundations exist in, in many communities, if certainly not all, unfortunately, uh, but that also may be another place to, to look for funding. Community foundations want to impact on their communities and supporting youth, helping them to finish school, be employable when they get out and become employed uh, when they finish school are certainly keys uh, aspects that foundations would want to support. Um, in more of a perhaps county programmatic area, drug and alcohol in, in most locations want to do some funding of prevention. They don't want to put all their money into treatment with people that are already unfortunately in, engaged or addicted to substances. They want to prevent that and preventing that frequently means implementing evidence-based programs that work with youth and families, work on their social emotional skills, work on their uh, involvement and, and becoming engaged. So drug and alcohol prevention funds might be a place to look. Similarly with uh, child welfare, children and youth funding, uh, perhaps through the county level, may be an area to focus uh, for certain programs that would want to be implemented. Going back to that page about what works. Looking at each of those, there is probably somebody in most any community that would want to fund them. And then there are national groups, uh, Robert Wood Johnson, of course, foundation among them, uh, other sorts of, of foundations that may from time to time fund things, national, uh, federal applications, which are generally more difficult. But I know in Pennsylvania, we have state agencies such as Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency, which has made it a priority to fund a lot of evidence-based programs that support youth and fund it and help get them get on the right track. Donna, that's that's really great, and I'm going to kind of go off the cuff here because you talked about prevention, and we had a really good question uh, during the webinar that kind of spoke to, um, you know, what what can be best be done to with youth that are already disconnected um, when it's not from a, a prevention standpoint. Um, and uh, the specific question was kind of how can providers and caregivers most effectively try to to reengage them in community and help them to start become uh, more prepared for this transition to adulthood. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to try and take a stab at that, or if, or if we can. Um, we can maybe just uh, take that offline too. Well, I, I'll t I'll take a stab. I, I think it's important to. Uh um, reach out to, to the youth where they are. Uh, chances are they aren't just sitting in their homes alone. They're somewhere out in the community. Is there a way that they can be engaged perhaps through the arts? Uh, many students who are disaffected from school uh, have very strong interest in, in some form of the arts uh, and maybe that's a way to engage them, to hook them in and to um, help them along the way. I know that's something we're working on uh, building in our Altoona Blair County area. Um, so you've got to kind of figure out what 
is it that they have some interest in to hook them in and then kind of take it from there to say, we're here to support you. We want you to see that you can have a positive, successful future in this community and we want to help you to develop the skills and the connectedness and the rootedness in community so that you can be successful because we all benefit when you are successful. And Justin, hey. if I can, this is Colleen, yeah. if I can kind of um, add to that as well. Um, and, and, and I think an importance is, is having you know, adults in, in the lives of, of children and youth. And, um, you know, there really is a lot of research uh, asking those, you know, children or students who felt disconnected or came from uh, pretty tough, um, you know, life circumstances, you know, how did they get out of that? And they most often will say there is one person in their life who believed in them who fostered a skill or a talent that they had. Um, and so, you know, we, we can talk about the, the, the large programs, but, you know, sometimes it's also going down just to individual, individual children as well. That's and great. Mentor, mentoring programs can certainly make a difference too. I mentioned Big Brothers Big Sisters earlier. Uh, I know that that's a, a wonderful program that is in many communities uh, across the country, but there are other mentoring programs with trained connected volunteers that can be very supportive and helpful of moving youth from uh, a place of disconnectedness to a place of con being connected to the community. Thank, thank you both for such thoughtful answers, and I think I think it's evident that there's just so much uh, kind of passion uh, and consequent rich discussion behind this this topic. So um, I did have a question that uh, asked if there'd be an opportunity to continue this rich discussion, and there very much will be. So I'm going to pass it on back to Erica to give you some details. Yeah, let's do continue this discussion, and and on Tuesday, August 29th at um, three o'clock Eastern, we're going to offer what's called a post webinar discussion, and this will give you an opportunity to continue this discussion with colleagues across the nation so you can discuss what you've heard today as well as share what you what you've been doing in your local community to help create these pathways of opportunity for youth. Now note this will be a conversation it won't be a webinar so we're hoping to engage people through video conferencing but if you don't have a webcam don't let that stop you you can still join us through calling in. So um, we're going to ask that you register for this event everyone who participated today will get the registration link. Um, so come to this um, discussion being prepared to discuss what are the opportunities in your community to engage youth and young adults and what are some options for addressing areas of need. Michelle Price will be there from NACO so if you have questions about NACO and the RIC you can certainly talk to her. I will be participating as well so I hope to see you on Tuesday at three o'clock Eastern. And I wanna invite you to stay connected with County Health Rankings and Roadmaps and NACO. You can follow us on Twitter. And I also invite you to like us on Facebook. And if you actually go to the County Health Rankings Facebook page, you'll see a story about me and my family and big brothers and big sisters. And you'll find out why this um, subject about this connected youth is so personally important to me. So I invite you to actually take a look at that story. Also, you can connect with us through our e-newsletter. Please do subscribe where you'll get information about our upcoming webinars, as well as our newest tools when they're ready to be unveiled. And visit the NACO website to get more information about the WIC and other resources that can help you in your county. I want to thank everyone for participating today. I want to give a very hearty thank you to Michelle Price from NACO, from NACO participating on this, and our guests, Colleen Heim and Donna Gordy, rather, from um, Blair County. Justin, it's always a pleasure working with you. You know that. And just thank you to our audience for all of your, um, your time and for the work that you do. Thank you for participating, giving us an hour of your day, and we'll see you on our next webinar. Take care, everyone.